So in this video, I'm going to talk about the cranial fossa as well as the cranial cavity. So to begin, the cranium protects the brain and its associated sense organs. And so something that might result if you have swelling of the brain inside the rigid cranium, so the cranium is pretty hard, it's not really going to stretch. And so this, if swelling of the brain occurs, it might force tissue through the opening right here. This opening is called the foramen magnum. And so if you have swelling of the brain, it may force the brain tissue through that hole and that could result in death. And so on the outermost part of the brain, there is essentially a thin layer or three la layers of membranes called the meninges. And the meninges just separates the brain from the skull or the cranial bones. And so the cranium is divided into two parts, the bottom and the top. And so the top part is called the calvera, and the bottom part is called the cranial base. And so the base is further then divided into three separate regions that compose the cranial floor. And by the floor, I essentially mean the part that is lower. And so let's take a look at this diagram down here. And so down here you can see essentially what you're looking at. So you're looking from the top down and it's cut right across the middle. And so the three parts of the base of the brain are called fossae. And so you have anterior cranial fossa, which is just the front, middle cranial fossa, which is the middle, and then posterior cranial fossa, which is the back. And so let me essentially identify where it is. And so here, the, we'll start with the anterior cranial fossa. And so you see essentially these loops kind of are the cutoff line. And so it's the thing, the anterior cranial fossa is just all up here. The middle is over here and it's separated by this line, this little ridge. And so the middle is here. I just outlined the middle. And then the rest is the posterior cranial fossa, which is all back here. And then this foramen magnum is actually where the spinal cord enters the brain. And it's actually pretty cool. So the different fossa holds different parts of the brain. And so the anterior fossa is going to hold the frontal lobe. The middle cranial fossa holds the temporal lobe. And the posterior cranial fossa will hold the cerebellum. And so that pretty much sums it up for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope that you liked this video and you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.